been keeping my eye on how the GOP is actually faring nationally after the Capitol 6 riots. Of course, what we had said is that very likely what's going to happen is that a lot of suburban whites are going to flee. You're going to be left with a bunch of people who are diehard Trump, Marjorie Greene, Taylor supporters, and that that party will not be able to win national elections. Well, something that kind of proves out this thesis, let's put this up there on the, from the screen, the New York Times about how thousands of Republicans are leaving the party. So in the state of California, in just three weeks after the, the riot, 33,000 people left the party. In Pennsylvania, it was more than 12,000. And in Arizona, it was more than 10,000. And I will say, just as a reminder, that 10,000 was around the margin of victory in the state of Arizona mm. itself. So losing these people is actually quite significant. And Crystal, they also found nationally 140,000 had quit the party in 25 states that had readily, readily available data in terms of voter registration. Again, that's not that many people whenever it comes to how many we have. But consider that the election for Trump came down to 44,000 votes, 45,000 votes across three separate states. And you think about it that way, on the margins, this makes a difference in Georgia, in Arizona, in Pennsylvania, Wisconsin. The loss there was only 20,000 votes. Look, this actually can make a difference if substantive, meaningful populations in the key states do leave the party. Yeah, it's one real data yeah. point. And we saw this in the polling, too, where over the course of the Trump presidency, mm -hmm. the, the refrain was always nothing matters, right? Didn't matter what he did, didn't matter how outrageous, how mad everybody was about it. His, like, approval rating would stay as flat as any president's in history, basically. Yes. And he would remain, keep this lock-solid um, grip on the entire Republican Party, not just the most hardcore base. And he's still broadly popular within yeah. the Republican Party. But for the first time, there has been some actual noticeable erosion. And I think this is one more data point in that. And just to put in context, look, oftentimes after an election, there's some shifting around of, of party affiliation. But this is way beyond um, what we're seeing in terms of Democrats. Some people have shifted from Democrats as well. But this is more than double the Democratic shift. And this is way beyond what you normally see post-election. So I do think it's a significant indication. Probably a lot of these people were functionally Democrats already. That's right. Probably yeah, they probably lot, voted for Biden. Probably these yeah. people voted for Biden. Maybe some of them voted for the Republican, their Republican congressman mm -hmm. man, man or woman. Um, they may have voted for a Republican senator at the state level. Um, and now they're saying, you know what? I'm done with these people altogether. So that means that's a problem not just for, you know, if Trump runs again, but that's a problem for Republicans writ large. That tribal affiliation is so incredibly powerful. There's so little crossover voting at this point that losing a significant chunk of voters to the, most of these people, by the way, are not registering as Democrats. They're registering as unaffiliated. That's right. But losing a significant chunk of voters when the country is so evenly divided, yeah, it's a significant thing. It matters. And so in the same Times data, only 79,000 Democrats actually have left the party since January. So there's a double figure there for the Republicans. We also had this from Gallup. Let's put this up there. Something I talked about earlier in the week. GOP image slides, giving Democrats a strong advantage, to 37. 37 is around where it was during the George W. Bush era. And again, just to give you an idea of how far that's fallen, it was at 51 in January of 2020 during the impeachment right before coronavirus, the highest level since 1996, accepting 9-11 for the GOP. Just gives, goes to show you exactly how much the precipitous drop is there. So if you have some sl slivers of the country, much smaller, where the GOP does have dominance, that's going to be only in deep red states. So that cannot win in a national election. It's the same problem that's been there for the GOP for a long time. Trump overcame it in a way in 2016, bare, almost lost, you know, barely lost there in 2020. But post January 6th, it does show that there are still a lot of problems in the coalition. Now, you would never want to underestimate the ability of Democrats to screw everything up. Right. No, look, and give, I, and give them the back in the game. I'm saying it's a problem. <laughs> right. Yeah. Of course. But, yeah. um, you know, I always think that's important context to keep in mind mm -hmm. because you could very easily have a, a situation where, you know, vaccine distribution doesn't go well. The economy is unable to restart. Um, there, the stimulus package that is passed is insufficient. And um, Democrats pay a big price 
in the midterm elections, which oftentimes, rather than being about the party that's out of power and any affirmative agenda there, are about, they're usually a referendum yeah. on the party in power. So you would never want to underestimate the Democrats' ability to screw things up. But Republicans are giving them a very good shot to buck historical trends and actually perform well in these midterm elections, which is not something that should happen, given that Democrats just won the White House and have control of both the House and the Senate. But I think it's very much a possibility if they're just able to do a somewhat decent job in the bar is set as low as it possibly could be. Yeah, that's exactly right. All right, we're going to have more rising for you after this.